The stage is yours, my friend. I'm drinking and singing my song I'm drinking for my whiskey And if you're drinking, won't you sing along? <laughs> Gotta love it. The one, the only, Vinnie Dombrowski. Welcome, everybody, to the first episode of Singing for My Whiskey with Vinny Dombrowski. I'm Mike Walters. That's Vinny Dombrowski across from me. And that was performed live. Hey, Vin, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good, Mike. Good to be here today. You want to play another verse? Do you have another verse? I only wrote, I only wrote one verse. <laughs> <laughs> good enough. Here we go. Singing for my whiskey And if you're drinking won't you sing along? Beautiful. That guitar looks like it was soaked in whiskey. Doesn't it? Well, probably. Your voice sounds like it's been sautéing in whiskey. Oh, boy, my ears. nose and throat guy would hate to <laughs> hear you say that. <laughs> I fooled him last time I was there, man. He looks at me and goes, uh, you been drinking while you're singing? Like, oh, oh God, no. Why would I do that? It was better than back in the day. The guy was like, uh, your nose is okay. He looks up my nose. He goes, you've either done a lot of cocaine, your nose got broke. <laughs> Take a guess. They know from the inside. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, I told the whole. A, I told him I was a boxer. There you go. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant that in a good way. That, that rich, brown, you know, full vocal, you know, that you got with a Jan Johnny Cash. For instance, you think so? You think it's yeah. getting better with age, like, uh, Dude, like, like it's, whiskey? Dude, it's awesome, man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. It is, again, Singing for My Whiskey with Vinny Dombrowski. And um, for those not aware, uh, I've been working Vin for shit, six months now. Ever since, when did you come in? You came in studio one day on the Detroit cast mm. and spent an hour with us, played a couple tunes. Yeah. And uh, I've been going out of my way, pounding your door down to get no, you over I, here I, to I, do I something. I appreciate that. You yeah. Know, I, for me to do something out of my, you know, box or comfort zone it's, yeah. it's difficult all i'm accustomed to doing is a uh, singing 90s hits songs <laughs> no you're a, you're a poet though you're a writer a storyteller all that kind of stuff and so that has always fascinated me and so we we were kicking back and forth like what what would we do if we did something and you've got other passions besides just music some being craft beers you swear by detroit and whiskey yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well and, and of course, you know, yes, we did do the uh, the beer session record, and we were lucky enough to uh, have a lot of great brewers around us when we did do that. Um, you know, the the whiskey thing, small batch whiskey thing. I, you know, I've been um, around it, you know, for about the last six years or so. You know, yeah. so over that period of time, you know, you acquire a taste for different things, and you ask a lot of questions, and you want more whiskey, and you ask more questions, and. And um, I think between, uh, you know, writing songs and being in bars and playing, you yeah, know, I'm around it and I'm interested. So it's something I know a little bit about, but I'm always into being more enlightened, so to speak. So yeah. that's why, uh, you know, talking a little bit more about the show, I go, what do I need to learn more about, I suppose? Uh, it, yeah. Of course, songwriting is one, but whiskey yeah, uh, is a great place to start. And I think that's what makes a great show is... Especially in podcast, radio is different. Radio is, you know, blown out into the ether. If you heard it the first time, or it's gone. Podcasts, you know, you can basically do anything you want. And the best ones, in my opinion, are people that have a passion for something, that are curious naturally and want to teach people sure. or enlighten people. Yep. And so it's like, okay, that's what Vin's into. Let's do it. Let's do that. Whiskey and songwriting and playing and just having some fun exactly yeah and, and that's that's the thing that that's the key the passion of it is the thing yeah. and it, it wouldn't be possible and i gotta tell you you know we we have tony here today from the mm -hmm. wine garden and and tony mr tony batu batu yes yeah, sir. i got Thank it right you. and i've known tony for ma many years you know i go into a store and the passion that he has because i asked him you know tony's going to vegas or something for some big you know whiskey convention yeah <laughs> and you know i i go to vegas and i would like to see tony in vegas when i'm in vegas sometime but 
Tony's enthusiasm. So Tony yeah. would be a natural to come in and, and, and sit and talk to about uh, to, uh, whiskey. Yeah, well, Tony, he speaks very highly of you since we first started talking about this kind of concept. Um, and we'll flush it out as we go. You know, I mean, we'll learn and, and do different things and all that kind of stuff. But he was like, dude, we, we got to bring Tony in here. He'll bring some whiskeys in and we'll do some sampling. And so he's, he's been talking about you for a while. And the wine garden, we should probably mention, Tony Batu, as you said, the wine garden in St. Clair Shores, Harper, uh, s south of Nine Mile is where you can find it. You, uh, you'd like it if some people came in there, stopped by, said hello. For sure. Yeah, and they don't have to be Vinny Dombrowski for you to take some time and teach them the, teach them the way of uh, whiskey. I love teaching. Yeah, you can, and that's what it is. You can tell. So you must love your job. I do. Yeah. I really do. So um, let me get through some of the, the stuff here. We've got a new email just set up, singingformywhiskey at gmail.com. That can be, you know, we'll all see those emails when they come in. Um, send us anything you want. You can song request, an old story about Vin anything at all, uh, questions about whiskey, about music, songwriting, anything, and we'll get it, and we'll go through those uh, every time we're doing a show. Um, also, uh, the Sponge, the Sponge Detroit on Instagram, is that what it was? No, it you, ended up being, what, official? It's Spon official Sponge Detroit. Okay, shit, I should have changed yep. that. My fault. See? Official Sponge Detroit on Instagram. SpongeTheBand.com is the website. You can get ticket info and tour info, um, which oh, yeah. I did, and I can't wait, man. I'm going to see you guys at the Whiskey. Coming up next did month. You booked your flight? I did. I booked the flight already. What? Did you cancel the show? <laughs> uh, it's funny, man. I got, had a heart attack almost yesterday. I'm booking the flights, man. I'm going. Wow. What? The, what the chart? <laughs> and then I go. Ah, we're we're flying back on. We're flying home on Memorial Day. So oh. you know we're getting. So I rolled the dice with spirit, man. You know, on the way back, I go, the guys will be so wasted and have had so much fun in Vegas, man. They won't care. They're getting on some weird spirit flight. So <laughs> just stuff them on the plane. They'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah, because you guys are doing uh, L.A. and then and the, on Friday night and then Sunday in Vegas. Yeah. Is that yeah, right? We'll be yeah. We'll be uh, yeah. Friday is the whiskey a go go. Uh, we have the Ramona Theater. I think it's the Ramona Main Stage on the Saturday and okay. then, of course in Vegas. What is that we're hearing? <laughs> T-Roy. Oh, boy. Is that T-Roy? Did you bump something? I think, I think we, we've already syndicated Sounds good. the show. We're syndicated. Already... Yeah, we're live, man. <laughs> the, the song's already been picked up and floating around the world. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Sponge Rocks on Facebook, too. You can find them there um, and get all the information you need. So um, why don't we bring Tony Batu into the mix? Because... I'll admit, uh, Tony, I am, you know, I was a little nervous because I'm like, Vin, I gotta be out. Dude, I don't know shit about whiskey. I know how to get drunk off it. But other than that, I really don't know much. I'm like, ah, oh, Jack Daniels. All right. What, how about that? Uh, old number seven. And he's like, don't worry. That's even better. Yeah. So what do we have here? I've, I've, Knob Creek, I recognize. So first of all, I want to thank you guys for the opportunity, and especially thank you, thank you, Vince. I really appreciate it. Great to see you, too. I just realized my voice is not nowhere near as yours. <laughs> <laughs> the voice sounds so, great. So I definitely won't be singing for a living. <laughs> uh, you can sing but, a chorus in that new tune. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we'll have you do that. Uh, How did you guys meet, by the way? Have you guys known each other a long time? So first time I actually met Vince, Vince has been coming to my store, but I didn't know he was a superstar. Yeah, um, rock star. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it, it, honestly, one of, my, one of my employees at work is like, uh, hey, do you know who that was? I'm like, no. He's like, yo, this is Vinny. I'm like, really? He's like, here, look, listen to his music. And I, 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 I used to listen to your song while, while I was working out. Like from the nineties. But I didn't know I didn't put the picture with the song, right? Yeah. So that's how I met you and that that's how it started. Yeah. You know, really. Did you but look then, at him different once you found out who he was? Yeah, he was actually very cool. I, I mean know. most people are, you know, standoffish. He was very nice. Arrogant about pricks, it. lots yeah. of them, especially yeah. uh pro high, yeah. you know, high profile guys. It's funny, T Roy and I met you at a bar in Ferndale. <clears throat> we first started talking about oh, yeah. this and you take off and we were just like cashing out or something. You walked out the door and, and T-Ray are walking out and these guys are just like, dude, was that who I think that was? Like, you must get it everywhere, but it's so, it's so funny when you're just like, yeah, yeah, it was Vin. He's a good guy, man. You should have said hello. You know, it, it, I got to tell you, it's, it's, it's good to be uh, 
uh, acknowledge or recognize, you know, that, that means there's still a pulse on the career, you know Yeah, what I mean? right, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they still remember. And you still look the same as you did. I do not. Yeah, you absolutely do. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, most, of, most, of, uh, most guys, you know, like me, we pack on 50 pounds and... You have not done that. If you go look on YouTube, it's so funny. I'll, I'll pull you up on Conan or something. Guess what, though? You're not going to see me. Your fucking you're not going to see shit. me. Yeah, any new new footage of me with my shirt off, man. <laughs> no, not man. a chance. That's funny. So, uh, what what do we bring? To, uh, what do we got here? What are we drinking? So, I, I brought in a little bit of uh, mixed stuff. Uh, a lot of those uh, bottles are picked uh, barrel picks from Kentucky. Um, obviously picked by us. Uh, we call ourselves Brotherhood of the Barrel because it's brothers picking from the same barrel. Uh, the first thing we're drinking is uh, Weller 107. Uh, it's called Weller Antique. Um, this is the same recipe of Pappy Van Winkle. Uh, now, for the lay like me, who is Pappy Van Winkle? I know I should know that. Uh, so, Pappy Van Winkle is, is a legend. He started out as Tissa Weller as a salesperson and ended up buying the uh, the distillery, and um, he was the first one to come out with a weeded bourbon, so corn, wheat, and malted barley. That's who Pappy Van Winkle is. Uh, his motto was make, make bourbon at profit if you can, at a loss if you have to. Yeah. That was his motto. So he, he, he created the best bourbon. In other words, store. he was going to do it anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's going to only make the best. So his grandson, Julian Van Winkle, uh, since Pappy Van Winkle passed away in, in, in the 90s when everybody was drinking vodka, uh, bourbon was not doing so well. They sold the distillery, and uh, Julian Van Winkle went to Buffalo Trace and have a 50-50 partnership. Uh, so he, he's, they're still making uh, Pappy Van Winkle and the Wellers at Buffalo Trace according to the recipes that uh, Pappy Van Winkle has. Julian Van Winkle is the grandson right now. Are those like secret recipes, like KFC's original recipe locked in a safe or Coca-Cola? It's, it's, yeah, no, not really. They tell you, they can tell you the mash bill, but, but, but the thing is, you know, where you put it in the warehouse is, you know, it's, 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 it's really? how it works. Yes. No kidding. How, yes. how important, you know, the, the barrels, um, if it's the same wood and you put them right next to each other, will they necessarily be the same tasting? Never. Never? Never. Really? As a matter of fact, I brought you two different barrels right now. They're two di from two different warehouses, from two different floors, and same recipe, and they're going to taste different. No kidding. 100%. So how do they make them taste the same if you buy, you know? Great question. Yeah, that, like Jack Daniels always tastes the same Great when you buy question. a bottle of it. How do, how do they do yeah. that? That's, that's called blending. Yeah. That's the blending art. So the master distiller can blend anywhere between 100 to 400 different bar barrels together to get that taste profile to taste the same way all the mm -hmm. time. Hmm. That, that's, that's, that's how you get consistency. Yeah. And so, so what is that? Uh, is this something you can go pick up? Can I go to the wine garden and, and pick up the one yes, we're drinking right now? except the Weller 107. Except the one we're drinking right yes, now. Why, now, why isn't that available? So this, this is part of only five to six barrels a year to the state of Michigan. Um, you know, and uh, the accounts that does a great job with whiskeys and bourbon are, are awarded uh, uh, such a high quality. This one is also non-chill filtered. Um, that's another method you have to do when you when you distill bourbon. You, you know, after it comes out of the barrel, you have to dis. Uh, it's called chill filtration. That that one is not done. Um, it's it. it, it is just a hard one to get. You know, yeah. there's not there's not even bottles on the market that you can buy that are not single barrels right now. It's mm -hmm. a very hard one to get because people figured out, oh, this is the same as Pappy Van Winkle. They well, want it. It really isn't. It's nowhere near really? Pappy Van Winkle because this is only like six years old. Mm -hmm. Pappy Van Winkle is 10. These are picked by Julian Van Winkle. These barrels at this time, just like how I go and pick the barrels, Julian Van Winkle picks the barrels and moves them around in, in what they call the sweet part of the warehouse. Is when they become <laughs> is when they become Pappy Van Winkle. Have you guys heard about this aging whiskey with music? Mm -hmm. You heard anything about no. that? I heard Metallica perhaps was doing this. You what is the vibration? Vibration. You yeah. subject <clears throat> the barrel with the liquid inside to to heavy metal music. Really? And that works the best because of the beat? Well, they, the, uh, speeds up the process well, perhaps this is what this does that is make what sense to you tony it does actually make yeah. a lot of sense the reason what he's trying to say is 
every time there is a movement, that whiskey is moving. The, the, the barrel inside is charred, you know. It, 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 to, to, your, to your question that you asked earlier, uh, the reason why the barrels are never the same, first of all, is natural wood. Right. You're never going to get the same product coming out of the barrel, like yeah. the taste. So, so what happens with the whiskey, in order for you to get whiskey, all that color and taste, it actually 60% of it comes from the barrel. Not no from the mash bill. Huh. Yeah, so... Well, I know that to be true because I know guitars are like that. You know, the, the fine woods that Gibson will use or Fender. Um, and and you, any guitarist that's gone and bought a guitar off the rack somewhere knows that no less Paul sounds like the one you just played. That's the crazy part about it, man. Yeah. You, you pick it up and you just see how it feels. You know? Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's key to it. But, uh, you know, truth be told, when uh, the product is distilled, the initial distilling, it's white. Correct. There's it's, no that's color. Called, yeah, that's really? called. Really? Yeah. It's 100% white. It's like vodka, but it's, it's not distilled. Vodka just gets distilled at 190 proof. So you mean like white like a white Russian or clear like vodka? Clear like vodka. Okay, man. So that's called a white dog or moonshine. Okay. You can call it whatever. Like, now, why does it taste the same? It, it actually tastes very corny. It doesn't taste like vodka. So vodka oh. has no taste because it's already, uh, it's already distilled at 190 proof, maybe 200 proof, where, where, where bourbon you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, that's one of the rules of bourbon, is uh, distill it at a higher than 150, I think. Mm. So how does it get its color then? The color comes all from the barrel. Oh, okay. So what he was talking about, the vibration, yeah. is where I was trying to get to is every time that whiskey barrel, the barrel is charred on the inside, or some of them call it toasted, but anyway, mm -hmm. they throw this, they throw a uh, flame inside the barrel, the barrel get charred like a char, mm -hmm. and, then, and then when it gets hot, the whiskey expands and go inside of that barrel, and then when it gets cold, it contracts and brings a flavor and color back. The more time you do that, the faster the barrel is going to age, and the more flavor you're gonna get, and, and that that's so what that guy what, what Vinny is talking about is when you vibrate it you're, you're trying to pr speed up that process yeah. of doing it right wow so so does that like soak into the wood and yes. then when and then it comes back out and that's yeah okay that's so it literally if i should have brought in a sample of of uh of a barrel stave and and after like five or six years you could actually see the line where the whiskey have traveled all the way really? to really yeah so the next time next Incredible. episode we do yeah. I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. i might bring in a sample so you can see it you can see the char sure. and then you can see how far the whiskey have traveled the now uh, the method behind it, uh, it, it is i know people try to speed up the process but nothing speeds up the process other than hot and cold that's the huh. only thing that speeds up yeah. the process so if you're opening a store and, or you're going into the, the making of that. Do you have to wait six years before you can yeah. open the doors? Yes. If can you doing your own stuff. Now, yeah. what, what do people do, Tony? They go and they find it elsewhere, but they, what, they put a label on it? So they're, you know, all the new oh, distillers. that's not right. Uh, yeah, I mean, they no, shouldn't I mean, be able they're, to. They're picking their stuff, though, right? They're yeah. Pick, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. Picking so they're they picking want. their barrels, yeah. okay. you know, but they got to keep the operation running. That's why you see most of the distilleries are, you know, starting out with gins and vodkas. Because that you, you just take it out of the you're faucet. In business, baby. And you're yeah, good. yeah, you're, you're making right? sales. So with with bourbon, you have to be at least at least two years in the barrels. Okay. At, at least two years. Stupid question: Is the wood the same in the barrels? All the barrels? Yes, one hundred percent American what, oak. American oak for yeah. all of them. Like anybody that's if doing. If you want to be bourbon. Bourbon or whiskey. No, uh, no, no, not whiskey. If whiskey. you want to be bourbon. If you want to be bourbon. You have to be one hundred percent American oak. Have to be a brand new virgin barrels. Yeah. Uh, they have to be 51% corn. They have to go in the barrel at no more than, no higher than 125 proof. Mm -hmm. So even though they distill at 150, they water, water them down to go to 125 before they're in the barrels. So is this something that, um, is there an art to doing that or is it pretty easy once you know, have your ingredients and your barrel and all that? Is it I don't know, like winemaking or bourbon, is it, is it a pretty simple process or, or is there a real talent that goes into like, you know, like Van Winkle or whatever? Well, most of the talent actually comes from, first thing you got to do is make a good moonshine. Okay, yeah. that's your number one. Number two is where, 
where where is your distillery at are you in a hot, uh, hot cold climate are you hot all the time are you are you cold all the time there's a reason why scotch starts at 12 to be good because it's cold all the time mm. there's a reason why there uh, most of uh, rick houses are only one floor where we want or where Kentucky is like six to seven to five floors yeah. depending on the warehouse so we want hot and cold the hotter the more hot and you cold you do it hot in the summer cold in the winter mm -hmm. the more time you, that whiskey is interacting with the wood and bringing the flavors and speeding up the process yes yeah so how much is like a bottle of this if you can't even get it here you only get so, a few barrels in the in the state i mean well there's so many barrels of single barrels okay only six single barrels <clears throat> the stores pick this product is also a blend so what, what you would find on the store, that's, the guy says, it's not a store pick, that usually means it's a blend. It's not a single barrel. Okay. Unless if it's specified and say it's a single barrel on it. Hmm. You know, like, uh, like Blanton's. All Blanton's are single barrel. But the you price know. will vary, though, correct? correct? Depending on, like, who it goes to and don't they appreciate and value as it kind of... Well, for instance, for this, we charged, uh, we charged 60 bucks. Okay. 60 bucks a bottle? 60 for a fifth? A bottle. Yes. At the shelf, at that time, when we released this barrel, the bottle was $26.99. Yeah. So, yeah. but right now, this bottle caught this bottle retail at the store without me picking it. It's yeah. $50 now. The price went up. Awesome. So, crazy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of craze behind this bottle, is what, the reason why I brought it. I wanted you guys to taste yeah, it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and the best about it is, is you'll see how soft it is because of the weeded recipe. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking away there. I, I, um, T. Roy's here, too. T, is that mic on? Do I have your mic on there? I don't know. Is yeah, there you go. Um, T. Roy uh, brought over a bunch of those, like, what are the airplane, airplane bottles, you know? And one night he was gone, and I cracked them open and drank a bunch of them. He went, dude. Those were in my dad's garage for decades. Those things were really valuable. You sound like Denzel Washington in the movie. He was a pilot, and he flew yeah. the plane upside yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. You know? he's, going to, he's going to court the next day and yeah. found the, uh, you know, the hotel refrigerator with all the little bottles. Yeah, they just had to keep him sober for the night before <laughs> yeah. he cracked into the thing. Dude, I was just like, oh, man, we're out of whiskey. Oh, there's something in here. And he was like, bro. <laughs> so what makes those so valuable? You remember that, T? You were, you were not happy. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I remember. <laughs> what were they? I don't know. Do you remember? I don't even know. Your dad. I, you were yeah, your dad, right? had, yeah, there was a collection, and, and uh, somebody had told me that new whiskeys and, and bourbons and different things told me, you know, oh, these are, you know, some of them $100 a bottle, some of them even. The, the little the, guys? The little small yeah. guys, yeah, some were. Pretty so close. Separate them. Yeah, I, These ones you can drink. Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, I did. They were good. I, I'll tell you, they were worth every penny of that hundred dollars a fucking shot because they <laughs> felt like an ass. But I don't know what makes it like. What makes one bottle ten bucks and one bottle a hundred bucks? And I mean, if, what are the craziest prices even that you've seen? Because some of these can get obscene. Yeah. So uh, I asked this. This is two questions. So yeah. Why is it obscene? Because uh, market value. Rarity? I mean, is it yeah, rare? They're yeah, rare. Yeah. yeah. Right it's supply and demand. It's it's that's number one. Number two, what he was talking about is dad's collection. We you know in the bourbon industry we call those dusties. What does that mean? <laughs> that means they're older products. <laughs> they're older products. So back in the day in the eighties and nineties, uh, they couldn't sell the whiskey. So when when the bottle would say on the on when the label says on the bottle six or seven or eight years old. It could have been it could have been ten or twelve years old because they had so much whiskey. Every every year the barrel is sitting in the warehouse are pay, being paid tax to the to the federal government. So they didn't want to pay tax on it. Oh, and all those. They're years. not really selling it. Okay, just put it in the six year and let it go. And that's what they did. They put it in in the six year because they didn't want to create another label that says ten year. Right. So whiskey wasn't selling anyway. So, it, it, so that, that's why those bottles are valued. Like I, I've bought wild, old wild turkeys, um, decanters and stuff like that for six, mm -hmm. seven hundred dollar bottles, dollars. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, it's very common right now. People are buying the older stuff because it does taste totally different than when, what, you're what well, we're tasting. What we're talking about right the now. '90s though. People were drinking. I know you mentioned this before. They were drinking what vodka. Yeah. So. Has this not invigorated the whiskey bourbon world, these different uh, small batches that people have come out with? Because I, I noticed it six years ago, but, I mean, does this not just breathe a whole new life into the sale of whiskey? 
Yeah, I mean, it's very exciting right now. I mean, when I can sit down with you guys, I can't, you know, if you bring in vodka here, we can't be talking about but two, three different things. Well, you'd have to bring in a bunch of gals and mix them together. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, they'll all taste like water. I mean, vodka is like, make it taste like water. My doctor says drink vodka on show days, that's what he said. Whiskey on off days. Really? Is there a reason for that? Just like it's not as as rough? (laughs) <laughs> my ear, nose, and throat guys are going to kick my ass. Yeah. <laughs> Brown liquor, yeah, is something with your stomach, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, I bet. Your tongue, too. You, you can I, feel it. I don't it. know. Yeah. That's what they say. <laughs> Days off, go ahead, drink yeah. your whiskey. Do you, do you abide by their uh, suggestions? I, yeah, I do. And, you know, yeah. I'm better at it now because, I mean, you know, I'm getting old. Yeah. <laughs> what did you? Were you a drinker before going on stage, Vin? Um, you know what? I never was a big drinker for a while. You know what I mean? For a while. I, then I missed about 10 years of my career. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you I'm know. better now. We've seen bands, you know, I mean, the debauchery, their shit face backstage yeah. doing blow and banging girls, whatever. You guys weren't really like that. Or did well, you, the, you had your well, moments. Well, I mean, you know, the, the 90s, you know, they, we were supposed to reinvent rock and roll. You sure. know, movies like The Dirt, you could look at that and you go, well, that was the 80s. But you know what? It was. It, it never changed. Yeah. It never changed. Yeah. You know, it was the same old stuff. That's why you look at... Well, the whores are closing in, man. That's a jam. Dude, I've been listening to that. I The, the recorded one, I can't remember if it was on Detroit Demos... Or if that was on... I think it was on the beer session. Was it on the beer? Yeah. That beer sessions is a great disc. It's, it's a raw record. That. Yeah. It's awesome. It's a raw record. That did. jams, man. You did the slow acoustic version last time we were hanging out. And boy, that thing kicks out, man. I hadn't even been drinking then. Really? I wasn't even drinking that day. So what, like, did you ever have like sloppy ass nights on stage? Oh, man. Yeah, and I feel bad about it. You know why I feel bad about it now? Because there's something called YouTube, right? So everybody's just like, oh, man. You know, they're... they're the, they're with their phones. You're just yeah. like, ah, man. Do you hate that? you got to notice that from the stage. I mean, I think it's kind of life-changing. You know what I mean? You see that, and you just go, that, that, that's not cool, man. You know what I mean? I mean, I shouldn't have been drinking, but they're not living in the moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can't you live in a moment and just yeah. stand there with your drink yeah. and party with me? you got to, like, videotape me, uh, yeah. you know, in a... Uh... It's got to be weird because you saw the difference. You saw the changeover because I remember... All of us probably do. Going to shows, I don't care if it was at Pine Knob or, you know, a club. Um, if you pull the camera out and, they, you know, it wasn't your phone. Shut you down. They'd shut that shit down. If you tried to get a recorder, I mean, there was an art to sneaking a video camera or a handheld into a show. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, and, and some people didn't. You have, you have those bootlegs and they usually suck. But now, and I remember when the cell phones first started, I absolutely remember being at, in those transition shows where, Sometimes they'd be like, hey, we can't record. And then when they just went, ah, fuck it, whatever. Yeah. And now you look at a show in the front and it's 50, you just see 50 arms up. Yeah, and I just wonder, when are you going to watch that? You know, like, yeah, never. When, yeah. You know, they're going to make a post about it. And I try to justify it like that. Well, you know, there's a platform here and I can share a sample of it. But it, it really is something that's like, yeah, dude, I'm never going to watch this again. What, why? Right. You know, but, uh, I imagine seeing that instead of just seeing happy faces going nuts, they're looking through a camera. It's got to be distracting. Uh, it's, a, it's a different world. But, yeah. you know, again, it, I just sit and go, you know, you're videotaping the show. And, the, you know, did we party? You know, some, some guys did not, you know. Yeah. They were in the health club early on, you know. Yeah. And uh, I was not. Yeah. Yeah, for, it, for better or worse, you know, I don't know. When was the worst time? Two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, was it like, I, I mean, like, w- before you made it, I, I know how hard you guys worked. It cost you a lot of money out of pocket. Before you were signed, had a record deal, because yeah. you're bringing your own sound guys and paying for them. Oh, I mean, guys. you know, certainly, you know, even before we got signed in Detroit, back yeah. in the, uh, the 80s, that was an insane, <clears throat> yeah, truly insane time. And partying hard then? Yeah, like, I mean, that was like going to college for me. I already had that stuff all figured out before yeah. we got signed. So it was like, that was not a big issue. But then, you know, things snuck back in as the band started to become successful because you didn't want to jeopardize your your success and the, the uh, energy that the label's putting into it, mm. you know. But eventually, like a lot of folks, they succumb to that, you know. It's just, you, you don't know why it happens or when it sneaks in. It's just one of those things that, that happens. Yeah. And, you know, some people pull out of it and some people don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I imagine, and I don't know, I've never talked to you about it, but I imagine, you know, being the lead singer of a band that's, that's hitting and, and you got a song on the charts, 
you're pulled in a million d different directions. Probably most of the band can walk down the street unrecognized. You can't in that time. And the pressure that's put on you personally for interviews, for everything, you know, doing this and that, you're pulled in a thousand directions and you're a fucking kid from Detroit. You know, you, you, there's no learning that. You just are thrown into it. Your life can literally change in an instant. How much of that can deal, do you go, drink just a fucking... Yeah, but I mean, initially, you know, it's funny you bring it up like that because I, I remember a kid from Detroit, like Sony had this big party for us, man. Like we, we got signed, man, and, you know, we're young fellas from Detroit. And, you know, probably cocky young fellas from Detroit. Sure. Man. So they got this nice party and people are waiting in line for drinks. And me and Jimmy, who was playing drums at the time. The Love band, Jimmy. God, he's a you know, speed we're demon, East man. Side, seven, six, six and Gratiot boys. And we're just like, uh, we saw, we, we could see the liquor stores. We counted them on the way in. <laughs> yeah. They're like, let's go to the liquor store next door and get a 40 ounce Colt or, you know, <laughs> and, and we'll brown bag it. We left the party, man. We're just like, this is boring. You know, so we weren't, you know, it, it took time to succumb to those kind of things about like being, you know, famous or a, a band that's got songs on the radio, MTV, that kind of stuff, man. Yeah. But eventually, I don't know what happens though. There's something that, that, that occurred uh, at some point along the line that um, uh, things started to get out of control. Yeah. I imagine, and once it starts, it's hard to stop, and it's because you're in it. You don't see it. You yeah, know I mean, you're not you're not uh, being objective enough at we the time. To, we need a waitress around here, by the way. Speaking of drinking, I'm. But I'm Tony here, brought I, in. You Tony know. brought in four <laughs> different bottles. You know. Yeah. And Which one would you like to try? Whatever you you tell me. I, I, Knob Creek, I've heard of. Okay. Is that is that local? I, I was going to say local, but probably no. It's Kentucky. No. It's made by Jim Beam. Okay. Yeah. Um. And the old, is this old Forester? Correct. Okay. Now, these, you said, are barreled at the same time, but will taste different. Correct. Okay. Yes. So what, you want to try one of those? Then you're out. I think that's, I think that's wise. Yeah. yeah. So okay. uh, the reason why we, I brought in these two bottles, Old Forester, Kings and Queens, uh, this is what we named them as King, Kings and Queens, because that way people remember what bottles they are talking about. Yeah. Uh, that's why you're seeing labels now on the bottles because people then know, hey, uh, I'm, you know, Tony, hey, I loved your king. You know, I didn't like the queen, whatever. Okay. Um, it, it, they'll remember it better than saying, oh, this one came from where I loved your pick from Warehouse O from level f from floor one. Oh, know, they're never they get gonna that remember into it. it, really? Well, they won't remember that, so I made it kings and queens. Okay, a lot there's of a stores. king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. see the label. So the king, the king was actually the the reason why we named them kings and queens because we picked those barrels and the the king, uh, the 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 whiskey went in the barrel. Well, I should say the moonshine went in the barrel at the uh, the same day that me and my wife was married. Not really? the same year, but the date. Right, right. You know, so it's our anniversary date. And to honor her, I made the queen yeah. when we picked the other barrel. So. Which is your favorite? The king, well, of course. The, well, the, you know, they're two different things. So, so if you want spicy, pepper, bigger, um, the master taster call it, uh, call it a boomerang uh, flavors, then you go with the kings. If you want caramel, vanilla, boomerang. easy drinking. Which one? Uh, then you get the queens. Okay, so how about you surprise me? The boomerang. Uh, so I've I never heard I, that. What is know, a boomerang? Uh, you know, so it's that means the the, the kick. That means it, it you know, that, back. <laughs> that means the finish keeps coming back. Yeah. That's called a boomerang. Okay. Uh, that's what she called it. You know? So, so, I'm, so gonna, I'm going with the queen. You're going with the queen, and I want to give you a little taste, and then okay. I want you to taste right behind it, the king. Have you tried these, Vin? Do you, are you familiar with these? these? I have not. Okay. I have not. Oh, sorry. I didn't pour you enough. Oh, you're good. <laughs> this is the king. See, okay. I, I taste this a little spice queen. in that one. This is the queen. Okay. They, I, they both going to have spice, but okay. wait till you taste the second one. Okay. Okay. And I taste the caramel and vanilla, did you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So nope. that's, that's like the number one predominant thing that comes out of a barrel. Usually is caramel, vanilla. You okay. Know? And if you see that this warehouse all came from floor one, so that's on the first floor of the warehouse. Or you see, this one is from Warehouse K, and it's from the fifth floor. Okay. That means it's hotter. It's like, imagine your attic and your basement. Totally, got it. Okay. And so what, what is the difference if, um, will people have a preference like, oh, I, I really like stuff on the first floor 
I don't think people spin. know enough to yeah, to, yeah. to go that crazy. But sure. they're not always like this. I could have a uh, I could have a barrel from the top that doesn't taste good. Boy, you these know? are smooth, man. These do not burn like yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Bourbons well, can 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 really you can feel them all the way down your chest. Right. But I don't want you to try the king because I think you're gonna get there. You're gonna taste oh, no. that burn. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I want that burn. <laughs> well, it's it it's it's burn in your mouth, but not burn in your in your in your chest is okay. what you want, right? Um, so. That, that burn in your mouth is basically technically thank you um, it's it's more more of a white pepper is what you get out of it mm -hmm. uh, white pepper spice um, not burning alcohol that's okay. what you don't want Could right be a good yeah. show day drink mm -hmm. oh yeah you see how much bolder it is yeah for and, sure and if you wait one second it's got some balls boomerang it, yeah it's gonna come back you know that flavor doesn't go away <laughs> That's good unless you're driving and pulled over, <laughs> right? Absolutely. If you're just oh. joining us, Singing for My Whiskey is the brand new show. This is kind of the inaugural. We did a practice show last week and had a lot of fun, and we might drop that too, but Singing for My Whiskey with Vinny Dombrowski, and the guy you're hearing over here is uh, Tony Batu uh, from Wine Garden in St. Clair Shores, Harper, south of Nine Mile, and we appreciate you coming by and hanging with us and bringing the whiskey. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for the Yeah, of course. Um, in fact... So can people, when people go to your store, because this isn't a bar. No. This is a store. Correct. Um, and I swear, Vinny and I, we're going to have to work a deal out with you because I want to take this show live, bring a bunch of listeners in, do it live from your place. Absolutely. Yeah. Done. It costs money, but we'll work that out later. We'll make but it dude, happen. We'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. How fun Great would that be? Call. Great call. Yeah. Bring your guitar. Come watch Vinny play a little bit. Have us get some whiskey with us. Tony can show listeners the ropes. Get them yeah. up to speed. It'll be a blast, man. We're actually making about a, a little back room. I, I haven't showed Vinny that, but uh, I'm I'm making I'm working on a little back uh, back room thing. Yeah, for yeah, maybe we could we could do that. Do it's, exactly that. We're yeah, yeah. A, we're little a VIP 12, area. Yeah, more more like a 12 foot table with, you know, get like 14 guys and smoke there a cigar. You go. And drink now whiskey, we're talking. Hell yeah. Sing some now songs. we're talking. Yeah. For sure. Um, and th yeah, this is good. So we've got one more to try. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll get to that, and we'll keep drinking. Um, Vin, do, are you a decent songwriter when shit-faced, if you're drinking whiskey and sit down to write something? <laughs> Not at all. Really? And, and I, I tried one time, man. We, we were playing Lollapalooza back in 96, you know, and we had a, a, a day off, a couple days off, man. So I went to this uh, place in Tucson, Arizona called Club Congress. You know, I'm going, mm -hmm. I got a rental car. <laughs> there's this hotel. There's no, there's no like... Back then, there's just no Wi-Fi, but this place, there's no air conditioning, man. I think John Dillinger, they tried to capture John, John Dillinger in this no hotel, No kidding. Man. This is in Arizona? Tucson, yeah. Jesus. So, man, it's like, <laughs> I took a guitar there, and I'm like, man, I'm just going to hang out and drink for a couple days and, you know, write songs. <laughs> it was the first time I ever tried that. Yeah. It didn't work at all, Nothing man. usable? Just, nothing usable at all, man. <laughs> I'm sure there's at least a whole record worth of stuff that I would... Flush down the toilet. Really? Yeah. yeah. What, what happens the next morning? You wake up and go, man, that song I wrote last night, that's the that's one. That's a crap tune, And man. then you look at yeah, it, and your handwriting's all running off the page. Nah, I just, what was I thinking, man? It yeah. wasn't, you know? But that's the whole thing. I think you got to bring up, you know, back then, you let, while the band's rolling, man, you're out there partying, you're having a great time, and all of a sudden, some of that stuff starts to take over the music, man. And you yeah. can't let it take over the music. Yeah. The music is the craft. That's the main thing, you know? So... That's why these days, man, I got to pull back and be cool with it, man. I yeah. just can't let, you know, get it carried away. I imagine, dude, 96 Lollapalooza, who was on that? Is that like Pumpkins oh, and... Man, that was like, to me, one of the, the coolest. That was yeah. like Metallica and Rage Against the Machine and Soundgarden and Fuck. the Ramones and Devo showed up and... Sponge. Just, yeah, we were out there on the second stage with the Melvins and it was just like... Man, it so was do like, the bands all hang out together and absolutely, man. And, uh, so nobody God. was throwing you off stage that when you're sitting side stage watching Metallica. You know what I mean? And they're yeah. not throwing you off stage like a lot of bands do that these days. Get out of like, here! You can't stand side stage. You're just like, uh, you uh, see I'm, this laminate, motherfucker? It doesn't matter, man. They're just like, yeah, you know, hit the road. But Metallica back then was very cool. No shit. So oh, who man. who are the funnest guys to party with? Like Soundgarden or Rage or? Zach scares me a little bit. I imagine he'd be angry. Uh, man, you know, <laughs> it seems he'd be angry. I think it's been kind of some of the the, the bands that we've uh, toured with recently. You know. Yeah. 
Because you're not so full of yourself anymore. So going out and hanging out with the Everclear guys, man. And yeah. The guys from Live, you know, they're nice dudes, man. Yeah, you know, Ed, Ed's a good... Ed's disclaimer. back in the band. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they had a different singer. We, <laughs> Chris was his name um, at that time. But Ed's back in the band, yeah. I remember Ed came in studio. I think they played a couple tunes um, in the Drew and Mike show back in the day. Yeah. And they had a show... Shit, where was it? The Palace, maybe. And it was right after 9 11. Uh huh. And they got fucked, man. I mean, that place was dead. And Live was a great band. They are. I mean, great really band. good band. Tight, fun, great show. And it was like, I don't know what it was, but nobody wanted to leave the house. I was, it was like days after 9 11. But that's, that's what I think of with Ed a lot of times, unfortunately. But yeah, I remember him being really nice. Yeah, Ed was one of those guys that threw us, threw us off stage. <laughs> <laughs> he did? We used to hang out with Richard Butler from the Psychedelic Furs, though, man. Remember that band? <laughs> yeah, sure. Remember that band, the Psychedelic Furs? Hell still, yeah. Yeah, he was a good guy. His wife always used to get mad at us because we used to get him drunk, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So wait, Live would say you can't be side stage? Or? Yeah, they, yeah, they'd throw us off stage. Oh, come on, man. There's some boys from Pennsylvania. I know that. But, you know, Chad, you know, the whole band now is cool, you know? Yeah. I, don't, I haven't seen Ed in many years. But. You and. You know, if I remember correctly, and we've talked a little bit about it, you shared management with uh, Soundgarden. Yep. I think Cornell's wife was your manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allison Chains, yeah. Allison Chains. Um, I'm fascinated by that because, you know, I mean, obviously we know the tragic ending with, with Chris, and I have serious doubts that that went down the way they think it did. Um, knowing the medications he was on, I was taking that exact medication at one point when I had pneumonia, I think it was, and I lost my fucking mind for days. And so when I saw in the autopsy report that medication, and his wife's bitching about it now, um, I was like, ooh, there could be a lot more to that story. I mean, I had people, my mom flew in from California to literally lock me in the house and babysit. Like for four days, I was hallucinating out of my oh, mind. Yeah, 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 yeah crazy, yeah. dude. So um, but, I just don't, you know, I, I don't know a ton about Chris's history. Yeah. You know, with, with other things that he's dealt with, you know, I, I, I just don't, I don't know. I don't doubt that, though. Yeah. I mean, but here's the thing Did he need to be out on the road, man? You know, he sounds like a, when you're in a fragile state, and, you know, yeah. if you could succumb to something like that, you don't belong out there on the road, man. Yeah. You know, I, I just believe that. I just go, I even question sometimes me being out there. I just go, yeah. what am I doing out there? But I go, I'm not trained to do anything else, man. You know? what, what is that? Is it just being un, unchained to responsibility? You're kind of on your own, and it's like a free pass to... Is that... I mean, I imagine that's where people get in trouble. They don't have a wife or a girlfriend with them every second to make sure they are being behaving. I don't know, man. The mind and, and potentially depression is a, is a, is a real tough thing. Thing. Yeah. Oh God. And I don't doubt that maybe that somehow played into. I mean, it, what I'm saying, a deep well. Yeah. You know, a deep well. Was and, he a good dude? I mean, you knew Chris. You know, bro. I, we did dates together. I remember being at his daughter's first birthday party. You know, and he yeah. was really quiet. You know. Yeah. He was really quiet. You know, but all those Seattle guys that we hung out with were always very, very good dudes. Well, very it sounded it sounded like a really unique scene in Seattle because it sounded like there was a real brotherhood behind the bands. There wasn't Absolutely, a lot of, man. yeah, I always got that 1000% good dudes. Yeah. Tight fellas, you know? And I love the stories of, you know, Chris pulled, you know, the, um, mother love bone guys up when, when Andy Wood died and, uh, did the temple of the dog album and, yeah. you know, let Eddie sing on it. No one knew who Eddie Vedder was at the time. And, you know, stories like that, you go, wow, that, that was really generous to donate the, the songs and the time to bring those guys together. So, I'm always curious, you know, and he just seemed like a gentle soul kind of guy, super sweet. It was wonderful, just a, oh. wonderful guys, wonderful guys make no mistake, you know. Yeah. But to, 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 to kind of go into his head and, and, and even speculate as to what was going yeah. on, man, it, it, it bothers me, man. I mean, I, even, I couldn't even, like, call, you know, Susan, Susan. his ex-wife, because I just didn't know what to say, man. Yeah. The only That's time the I, time you should call her, because nobody knows what I to know, say. I know, bro, but I, you know what, man? I was sitting there. We were in Vegas, man, October 1st in, in 2017, you know? We drove in from, um, where did we drive in from, man? Redondo Beach, sponge had okay. a gig, 6 o'clock in the evening. We roll into Vegas that night. It was probably about 10 o'clock or something, and the whole town is lit up with, like, fire trucks and... and um, uh, first responders, you know, we're going, yeah. what's going on, man? And that was the night of Route 
was it Route 20, Route 19? Which one? Oh, the the cop, the um, the uh, country show. Yeah. Big festival where the guy, oh, Stephen, yeah. uh, whatever, shot 500 people. Oh. Yeah. No kidding. I sat there in a bar, man. I was just floored. I I I watched Stephen cry like a baby. Yeah. Man. But I sat there all night. Yeah. You know, and and I text her because I, I you're just thinking about all the people. You texted that, Susan. Yeah, because yeah. I just I, I couldn't reach out to her until then. I just I, you, but you think about all the people that are important to you. you know yeah, I mean? sure. I'm thinking, you know, my kids, my wife, and I, I felt so bad about never reaching out to her. You know what I mean? About and I, you know, I know they're divorced, man. You yeah, know, that I doesn't did, matter. But it's just I just didn't know what to say. You know? How how was she? She probably appreciated it. She was. I, I probably sounded, you know, nutty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Do you remember anything about the conversation? Not to pry if you don't want to talk no, about no, it. No, no, no. It's just, you know, just giving my condolences. You know? Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't a text, man, you know. Wow. But it was like, you know. Dude, you know, that had to be amazing to roll up on that. That was insane. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I probably sound one saying I'm not buying the details of Chris Cornell necessarily at face. Um, but I don't buy that. Stories of Stephen Paddock. E was that his name? Yeah, that's, that sounds familiar. Let me look it up. So, the, right. the shooter there. I didn't buy that story either. The way it went down. There, there I was don't know, too brother. many. It just, it just, uh, it just hurts. Hurts. Yeah. You know, it hurts. It's brutal. Yeah. Brutal I, story. I, I, I go beyond it. I just go. I don't know, but man, I couldn't imagine something so. You know, like so. You're having such a great night, great yeah. time, and Ugh. that goes on. Yeah. You it's know? terrifying, man. It's a different world than it was, and. You know, you think of, I think it was Ariana Grande playing in, in Europe yeah. when the kids are leaving the stadium and someone opens fire and kills 12 kids or something. It's like, yeah. what? You know, a bomb going off here. And, you know, I mean, you think of um, Dimebag on stage oh. being taken out. I mean, it's just, does that thought even cross your mind ever? All you, the time. It does. When I'm signing autographs, bro, I'm literally like, I'm watching people's hands. Yeah. I'm watching their hands. Isn't that I'm, awful? Well, it's the world we live in, though. Scary. Yeah. You know? I know. Remember the station fire in, um, it was in, the Great White Fire. Oh, yeah. Station fire. Where, where was that? Bo uh, Boston? New England? Something like that? We got a guy on our show. He was unbelievable. <laughs> he was the, what, such a great interview. And this was a guy that was the drummer in the opening band that night. And um, the interview's online. I, he, Rhode, Rhode Island is where it was. It was in Rhode Island. Who, 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 give me the details of our interview. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. It was uh, Ali Prudhomme is his name. And it's unbelievable. To, you know, he was in that building, lost half of his band, um, died that night in that station fire. He had to testify. And, uh, you know, I don't remember how many people, but the images of that, kids trying to get out of the front door as that thing went up in flames like a tinderbox. And this is a guy who turned down interviews from everyone from yeah. MTV, da da da, yeah. and and you know it took a while to convince him that we were not gonna glorify or be typical media scumbags and hear his story. And it's unreal to hear it from his mouth, you know, and and what they went through and what that did to everybody involved. It's just you go out for a fun night, music with friends, and exactly. some drinks, and exactly, exactly, yeah, it, it's the last thing you would expect, but. It's the world we live in now. Yeah. Right? Like that young young kid that was thrown off of the third floor. Oh, at the, at the mall. mall yeah. yeah, I just go, I, I can't get that out of my head, man. I yeah. Just go, I, I can't understand it. And that kid, as far as I know, is still alive. I don't know. I mean, you think I, like. I pray for him every night, man. Yeah, yeah. And good for you, because I know the mom, that's all she was doing was screaming, please pray for my boy, pray for my boy. And, you know, th you know, there was a lot of money raised in no time for that family for medical bills, which is. Humane and uh, generous and whatnot, but you know, I always think like, dude, is it? It's amazing he's hanging on and alive, but is it? You know, you wonder if that's even best. You know, someone, a five-year-old thrown. It's incredible. It's incredible. That's why I write songs, brother. That's the, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I can't even conceive. I know we've gone into a dark place, man. I know, man. <laughs> Where'd you take us, man? Wanna, we we haven't even played this song. This is criminal. We've had you here forty-seven it. Gonna, minutes and. I'm gonna play one song. That's all I need to play tonight. Man. Yeah, no, you know, we can do more than that. It's a but... song, nah, brother. What do you got? I'm not gonna play any other song. Because <laughs> after that, that happened, man. I had this one tune, and I rewrote it for for that tragedy in Vegas. Oh no, kidding.
Driving out of Vegas And headed for L.A. Need to find a drink to get my head straight didn't need some Hotel California I needed whiskey, not some wine The place I found looked like I felt at the end of my line But when I walked in She got up from the bar Cigarette hanging from her lips She said, hey, 90s music man Tell me why Tell me why There's more angels in heaven tonight Tonight In a world that's so broken We cried all of our tears More angels in heaven tonight Remember when the music could make you feel alive It was the best and the worst night of our life Jason L. Dean was on the jukebox Yeah, we talked about Detroit We were drinking on a Monday afternoon Cause when I walked in She got up from the bar Cigarette hanging from her lip She said, hey, 90s music man Tell me why, tell me why There's more angels in heaven tonight Tonight in a world that's so broken We cry all of our tears More angels in heaven tonight Wow. Fuck. Damn, dude. Mm. That is powerful, that's man. All I got. Holy yeah. shit. How long after that did you, uh, did you sit down and, and work that out? <laughs> right away. <laughs> really? Is right. that something like that night when you get to a hotel? Yeah, right away, man. Right away. And right it just away. comes easy. Yeah. I imagine that came easy. Yeah, right away. That's got to be therapeutic in a way to have that release, that outlet that you can go to at any point in your life. No matter what you're feeling, you've got an outlet that you can go to like that. Because I, I just don't understand some things, you know what I mean? And the only way I can understand is you write something about it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's it. Damn. That's all I got. That's got to be an incredible thing, man, to pull up on a, on a scene like that. Like, what the hell's going on up there? And then find out exactly what's going on up there. Brother, Insanity. We were, down, we were down at the, we checked into the Hard Rock, you know, and we just sat there in the casino looking at the TVs, man. The weird thing was, though, man, people just walking around like nothing's going on. I was just going to ask you, were they still gambling? Were they oh, still, yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Man, my jaw was dropped on the floor, man. I, I, and they knew, right? They had to know. How could you knew, not man. know? Everybody knew, but... Yeah. Yeah, that was tough, man. That was mind-boggling. What does it take to get people's attention, you know? 9-11? I mean, 9-11, I, I remember seeing images of guys just crowding around anywhere they could find a TV. Work was irrelevant. It's a lousy reason to have to look at something, man. Or yeah. Get people together, you know, awful reason. And that's why you can't, uh, like when you went to Arizona to write songs. And you went there to write songs and came out with garbage. And then you come out with something like that <laughs> and you just write one of the most beautiful songs. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it, you can't force it. It's, well, thank God, you know, know it's, it's about being present, man. But, yeah, exactly. that song was intended yeah. for something else, man, initially. And I, I yeah. rewrote the thing, you know, and I'm like, yeah. Well, I couldn't even look at E. I'm like, if I look at E, he'll start choking up, and then I'll start choking up. I don't want to go there, man. It's fucking powerful shit. Powerful, yeah. powerful. Well, this has been awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Tony, thank you for coming by. Oh, we try everything. We didn't get to the Knob Creek yet, so. We still can. Yeah, we, we still should can. talk about the Knob Creek. Yeah, let's do it. I didn't mean to bum everybody out. Dude, you no. didn't bum anybody out. That was beautiful. <laughs> that Honestly, was man, awesome. I, I love hearing where the art is created and how. And, you know, you know, there's, imagine, I don't know how often those moments happen where you're like, I need my guitar. Where it's just like right now. Well, I got my phone. So I, what I do is I record stuff in the phone. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Drink that up, Vinny. You need oh, it. <laughs> I, I didn't see it. I didn't have my glasses on. <laughs>
<laughs> Slamming it. <coughs> wow, that's got to look good. So, Tony, the how, um, product. when you met Vin, did he know shit about this stuff? Has he, has he come around? Is he, is, is he someone you can actually talk with and hang with about whiskey? I or love bourbon? hanging out with Vinny. The thing yeah. is, Tony, this is, this is the cool thing about Tony's store. So you put in tap handles, right? Now, the beer thing, man, it's like we've been like the Orbitsons and Sponge. We've been doing beer fest. We love the Michigan Brewers, yes. the Guild, and the guys, and the brewers. And, yeah. you know, they do great stuff, man. Great. We're huge fans. And we're spoiled, by the way, man. We go around the world, and guess Michigan is just, like, killing it. But yeah. Tony has been such a proponent of even the Michigan craft beer. He's got those tap handles in his store. So he's filling growlers at the store. Oh, yeah. Really? This is the new thing that the state of Michigan just allowed us to do maybe about a year and a half ago. Uh -huh. I've been wanting this actually for a long time. Yeah. You know, for me visiting other cities like Kentucky, uh, Tennessee, um, uh, where else have I been? Uh, a, a bunch of other cities, really. Um, are there cities that, we don't know about that are really killing it with the bourbon game? Because we always think Tennessee, Kentucky, the oh, yeah. obvious, you know. Yeah, yeah, T Texas, Texas for sure. Um, uh, California, yeah, yeah. they 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 it's it's out there, man. Yeah. New York, you know. Really? They, oh yeah, they, they got a ton of um, ton of uh, smaller distilleries mm -hmm. that are starting out. I mean, you got to remember one thing. In two thousand, I think nine or two thousand eight, there was maybe like two to three hundred distilleries in the United States. Yeah. There is more like than five to 6,000 right now. Wow. There is like two to three distilleries opening up every day Sacred in this country. Shores at Baffin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a good Evan, example. He, yeah, yeah, he's, he's got his still installed. Yeah. Uh, uh, is that good or bad, though? Well, I, I mean... It, it's got to cut into profits on, on some level when, there's, well, when it's available. It, you know, to be honest with you, uh, I think there's more money in the, in the, in the beer. Um, yeah. I say make the best thing you can, make it good. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I think. But, you know, people always dabble in, you know, hey, I, I want to try this. I, I, I want to make it. Hey, you're being crafty. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you've yeah. been open, open minded business owner. Um, uh, another one, another fellow that I really know from uh, Ellison Brewing out of East Lansing. Oh, yeah. He, he's yeah. been putting, Aaron, he's been putting like uh, a bunch of barrels away, more than, more, over a hundred barrels that he's putting. He has, uh, he has a rye and a bourbon. Mm. Um, the thing with this is y you have to remember, it's going to take a long time. N nothing, you cannot turn in good product in two years. Is, uh, yeah. is two James, are they, they're aging their own though, is that correct? They're aging all their own right now, but I think when they started, they were buying their juice. Well, I when I drink the Grass Widow, though, is that is that one a product that they've they've aged themselves? I, I don't think they disclose that information. I mean, okay. most distillers, if they're honest, they'll tell you this I is like not the product. Mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, most distillers are gonna tell you this is not my product. You know, and I'm working on my product. This is you know, yeah. it just takes time. Mm. Uh, a, a lot of distillers. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to hide behind the bushes and they're just going to, you know, say, oh, this is ours, you know, when it's yeah. not. Are, are, are there a lot of, like, home people doing this? Like, obviously, uh, the craft you, brew. It's against the law. It's against the it law is. to actually distill in your house. Yeah. You can okay. blow your house up. Okay. So, yeah. so you're, there's no game like that. Like, the beer one, we have people, mm -hmm. listeners that are doing it, that are getting into it and, you know... I don't know how long it takes to get good. Some of them really but, uh, suck. I, I, but, but you got to love the fact it's a product of necessity, though, because a lot of these guys, you know, if the car companies were just rocking on cars, we'd all be working in factories. We yeah, wouldn't be yeah. brewing beer, <laughs> distilling anything, yeah, running yeah. a store, nothing. We'd all be, like, probably, you know, building cars. But that's not the way it is these days. So people take their, you know, livelihood in their own hands it's and cool. go out and do this kind of thing. Around yeah. Prohibition, they were actually – around Prohibition, there was – you know, they had the medicinal purposes licenses, just like how we have marijuana licenses mm, yeah, right now mm, yeah. in the state of Michigan. They were three times more medicinal purposes licenses <laughs> than the people that live in Kentucky. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of and course. you're allowed one pint a week. A pint a week? Yes. Well, who's going to measure that, though? Yeah, yeah right, right. Follow up, right? <laughs> it's where the mob exploded, yeah. you know? Yeah. Sell it out yeah. the back door. They didn't give a shit. Yeah. Hey, man, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely, Thank man. you for Thanks coming for by. Thanks for the invite. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you, Vinny, for all the good, uh, good you, songs. And, 
Appreciate yeah. hanging out, drinking, and oh, it you know, won't be the last whiskeys. time. Tony Bad Two, thank you uh, so much. Wine Garden, St. Clair Tony. Shores. Go Cheers. say, go say hi to Tony. Cheers to all you guys. This Cheers. is informative. Cheers, There's a lot more to learn, so we'll, we'll keep doing it. Um, Harper, South of Nima, go say hi to him. And I swear to God, we're gonna come out there one day and do this show live on you location. Should. Bring the fans out and hang out. Um, Vinny, always a blast, brother. Uh, I love it, dude. It's singing for my whiskey. It's the new show. I hope people enjoy it. And we're just getting started with Vinny Dombrowski. And uh, s send us uh, an email, anything you want. Request a song, tell a story, singing for my whiskey at gmail.com. Sponge Detroit on Instagram, or of official Sponge Detroit on Instagram. SpongeTheBand.com is the website. Sponge Rocks on Facebook. Vin, take us out. My whiskey. I'm singing and drinking, sing my song. If you're drinking, why don't you just sing along? <laughs> 